In attachment theory, we have this word mentalizing, which means exploring one mind with another mind. So I'm here exploring what's going on over there. One mind to another. It's in this capacity that we develop a metacognitive or reflective capacity, which is really, which, uh, the idea behind that is that it helps, uh, and the idea behind it is it helps us lower our self-centeredness, our self-centered orientation in the world where everything happens internally. It means I'm here here it means i'm here with you while you're over there with you and we're in this together i'm here being with you while you're over there being there with me i went into this in some ways in my video on developing a secure self on mentalizing but for today i want to look at applying a body-centered yogic approach to augment the words so we don't hold it just as mental I've integrated attachment theory. I've been integrating attachment theory and a somatic understanding of yogic philosophy for many, many years, about 30 years at this point. And the idea behind it that I'm going to talk about, I've been integrating attachment theory, trauma treatment, and a somatic understanding, which includes a yogic philosophy to look at what I call the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. A vertical axis, a horizontal axis here, and a vertical axis here. If we think about it, the horizontal axis is where we're connected relationally with others outside of us and with ourselves. So here we are with our self and others over there. We're here with ourselves and we're connecting to others outside. And then we can be on this expanse at various times. We might be more aware of what's going on inside, more connected to ourselves or more connected to others. And sometimes we're just more connected internally. Even, say if we're meditating, we're more aware of this whole field than being connected outside. There's also times when we're more absorbed in our own feelings, thoughts, and our worlds, and that we're over here. It's important to be able to be both. You know, I need to also be aware of other people out there and see how they're affecting me. Sometimes, with, especially with the anxiously attached style, we're more aware of the other person. We're more attached out here, anxiously connected, and that then means we're less connected inside ourselves. So we're trying to focus on this external world as a way to deal with our inner world, but we get sidetracked in many ways. It's important to be able to have both, to be able to be inside ourselves and connected to others at the same time, or shuttling back and forth so that I can be here with you and you can be there with me and we can be there together. We can be aware of each other at the same time. And from a sacred or spiritual or wisdom tradition, we're also connected vertically. We have this vertical axis inside, connected to the great spirit above and the great mother and all the medicines of the earth below. I'm connected in all directions vertically and horizontally, when I'm connected to everything all the time. And this is where the yogic idea of the body can be so helpful. In yogic philosophy, there's a sense of the five layers of the body, not just one. We're not just one person, one being. There's many layers to us. There's the physical sensorial level, the sensations that go on. There's the prana, the energy body being able to be aware of the life force that's inside, moving through everything, everywhere, all the time, helps us grow, develop, and flourish. It's what has an acorn become an oak tree. It's the whole idea behind a butterfly going into the chrysalis and coming forth. It's the whole idea of the caterpillar 
that goes into the chrysalis and becomes a butterfly. That's part of the whole energy body. Then we have the mental, emotional, and physical, the, psych the mental, emotional, psychological layers of the body. We also have the wisdom body, where some traditions and some psychotherapy traditions have this as well. It's the idea of being able to witness, observe, have discernment, and be able to be with everything. And in yoga, we look at the bliss body, where we're connected to everything all the time. We can also use this bliss body as a way of prematurely transcending everything. We can go to the bliss body to avoid being with other parts of us. You know, that's, that's why we need all of this all the time. And then we have these full experiences that we can have where we use our whole body, mind, and heart to attune not just to ourselves in here, but to the world as large out here, to others. When we're over-connected outside, we can be less connected inside, and the reverse is true too. We not be as... When we're so connected over here, we might not be connected on the vertical level. And we can be so connected to ourselves inside and to whatever the pain and suffering that we're going through that we're not aware of other quadrants and other areas of us. So this is also, those of you who have heard me talk about the self-other distinction, that's part of what's going on here. Our own beliefs and patterns affect others as well. Like what's going on in here affects people out there and it's important that we're aware of that. If I'm caught in a part that's grieving or uh, caught in my own traumas and history, it's going to affect other people. Not that we shouldn't be there to process it and shift it, but when we're stuck there, when we're caught down here maybe and we're swirling in it, that's going to have an effect over here. If somebody out there is uh, totally exuberant and not and so lost in themselves they're not going to be aware of me as well that so there's different ways this is a fluid map of what's going on inside I could also be as I've talked about prematurely transcending caught in my experience of bliss and not aware of layers inside of myself or how that's affecting other people like somebody else might be caught in a painful place in their life. And if I'm up here, I'm not going to be as aware of them there. So I need to be able to have all aspects of myself or choose. So having this kind of a map allows us to become aware of the grandeur of building blocks inside each of these quadrants that can lead to behaviors and reinforce or change the patterns of interactions that we have. We especially need to be aware of maladaptive patterns so that we can begin to shift them piece by piece. So if I'm behaving a certain way, it's going to have an effect on somebody over there. And you over there have an effect on me. The choice point is, how do I want to behave in response? If I'm caught here or if I'm aware somebody's caught over there, how do I experience. It could be in any of the quadrants. So when we're looking at the idea of mentalizing from the yogic or the wisdom tradition, we can include a more full-centered perspective. That's a sensory awareness of every layer of us going on. Using our whole being to attune to the other while also being to attuned to ourselves. And the whole point of mentalizing or full attunement is to be able to accurately notice and name what's going on inside, especially those maladaptive beliefs or patterns, to become sensitized to the limitations of the patterns and beliefs that are going on, not just inside of me, but inside of others as well. To identify the granular building blocks that lead to behaviors, especially the maladaptive ones. And it also helps us be able to put our moods, attitudes, and the various states and traits we go into, the parts of us, into perspective and context. And realize how our way of being is affecting others and how they might think and behave as a result and how others 
way of being and how they think and behave has an effect on us. And maybe best of all, the whole point is to develop more positive representations, to be able to change so that we can have the relationships to ourself, to ourselves inside, and to others outside in the ways that we want. I hope this is helpful. Leave me a comment so I know.